It's Carl Brown, Guitar Lessons 365.com. Have got a fun classic today. We're going to learn how to do Gypsy Road by Cinderella. Uh, so, you know, I'm a big fan of Tom Kiefer and, and the gang. So, um, this is a fun one to play. Not very difficult. Uh, Tom Kiefer's got a great solo in it as well. So, a lot of cool stuff. So, before I get into it, please subscribe to the channel. If you have not already, ring the notification bell so you know when I see a new video and all the good stuff. And uh, if you like what I do here on YouTube with all these song lessons, um, a great way to support it is actually just join my Guitar Academy. You'll see a link to my Academy in the description below. Now, my Academy contains all of my guitar courses. So that's a systematic guitar course that's covering everything from complete beginner stuff to more advanced courses in technique, improvisation, ear training, theory, and guitar tone. And you also get personalized support from me there as well. So please click that link, get a free seven day trial uh, below, and I hope to see you there. So let's jump into the track. We are in standard tuning, so nothing complex there. And we're gonna start with this main riff. Looks like this. So that's gonna start with a half step bend and release at the fourth fret on the A string. Look at that. Then you're going to come back and grab a B power chord. So that would just be the, uh, now you can do it like this. Tom Kiefer bars, it doesn't really matter. You can do whatever way is comfortable for you. Uh, so we have, go back and grab this B power chord at the second fret of the A string. So it's the second fret of the A, fourth on the D and the G. And what you're going to be doing is picking that bottom note and then the top, you know, that's the way this. Then you're going to go 0, 2, 4 on the A string, back to the B power chord. Just kind of pick across it once, and then the bottom string, and then the top half of the chord. Just wear this. Then you should repeat that. So at the end, after you, in the intro, you do it four times, and then you, uh, you're going to transition to the verse by doing this. So that's going to be the open low E string, third fret, fourth fret, and then into this A power chord there. All right, and then that gets us to the verse. Now, the verse has two separate parts. Uh, so the first one I'll do is what Tom Kiefer's doing, and then I'll show you what Jeff Labar plays. Um, so Tom Kiefer's really kind of holding in, holding the the main rhythm down underneath it. Looks like this. All right, so that's just. Um, this kind of standard little blues thing. We're going to have the open A power chord, so the open A string, second fret down to D. And it goes, goes up and adds, it still has the open A string, but now you're going to be playing the fourth fret one time on the D string with it. So instead of the second fret of the D, and then back to the A power chord. So this. So 
know, that kind of standard blues rhythm. So we have this. Then we go back into the main riff we just did before. And that same little uh, bass line, zero, three, four on the low E, and then back to that A. So that's the verse. So all uh, Tom Keeper's part right here. We have one more time for the verse. I'm sorry. All right, now Jeff Labar, uh, a little bit different. So it was just when they're doing that little that rhythm, he's gonna jump up. He'll start maybe with him, uh, play along with Tom Keeper at the very beginning. But after you've done that first little F sharp back to E there, which is on the, on the, the four to two on the D string, you're gonna jump up and grab these double stops here, which is the uh, fifth fret across the B and the high E string. And he hits them four times there. And then back to the same main riff. And then kind of repeat that. So that's going over what Tom Keeper's doing with this little uh, though. kind of work complement each other really well all right um so then we get to the pre-chorus uh, they both kind of do similar things here it looks like this all right so that's going to be uh this d power chord up here so we're kind of doing that same little uh, basic blues thing here off the fifth fret of the A string. So this is D power chord. So we have five on the A, seven on the D. So you hit that a couple times, then you're gonna have to reach up a little bit of a stretch. Ninth fret on the D while you're still holding that fifth fret back there on the A. And then you go back to the seven. So that's the rhythm. Do that a couple times there. And then just take everything to the lower the, to the low E string. So we have the fifth fret on the low E, seventh on the A, but the same uh, thing again. So this. From there we have this. So that's a quick half step bend and release at the second fret of the low E string. So the open low E. And then you're gonna grab this E power chord, which they use, they both use throughout the song. It's got a big open E power chord. So it's a little bit, you might not be too familiar with playing it like this. We have the open low E string, second fret there on the A and the D, but the fourth fret now on the G with the open B and the open I E with it. So it just creates a big E power chord. So we have this. Kind of just um, hanging out on that big E power chord. After that. Then you go back up to that same little blues uh, figure here at the off the D and the A. We're going to end the pre-chorus by just playing a standard G power chord here off the low E string, third fret of the low E. That kind of standard eighth note. Kind of down.
final strokes and then down to the F sharp power chord. So down one fret to the second fret. So all together for the pre-chorus. All right, and that's gonna take us to the the chorus, which is kind of a variation of, it's got the kind of parts of that main riff in there, uh, but it does a couple other things as well too. So it looks like this. And then back to that main riff. So uh, that kind of starts with the same, that same main riff just played once. From there, you're just gonna go straight to that big E power chord that we talked about earlier, the open E, and then the second fret on the A and the D, fourth fret on the G, open B, open I, E, straight. So we have this. Then we go to that little A blues thing that we did uh, in the verse. And then back to the E power chord. So we have this. Then we kind of repeat it again. Now here at the very end, instead of just going back to the regular E power chord, he, they do that. Which is just that same half step bend release in the second fret of the low E string. The open E now string. And then you can grab that E chord, but you want to kind of really do it kind of an upstroke in the top two strings. So you really want to bring those out. So for the whole chorus there, it looks like this. All right, and then we go back to the same main riff that we did in the intro. Just a couple times. And then back to the same verse. So the verse is the same as the first one. Then it goes back into the same pre-chorus, into the same chorus, and into the same main riff again. So it kind of goes through all those sections again. Um, and then we get to the bridge where, where we have a slight... There's Tom Kiefer's doing something slightly different than what um, um, Jeff Labar is doing. So we have Tom Kiefer just kind of holding the chords. We have this. All right, so that's gonna start here at this C sharp power chord here off the uh, fourth fret there of the A string. Down to an A, open A power chord. Into that big E power chord we talked about. So this is. And then uh, we're gonna go to this B power chord and do that. So this is probably the biggest stretcher in the song. Uh, we have basically second fret of the A, a fourth fret there of the D, and you gotta do that little, it's the same thing we did here, but down here. So we have this. Then back to the C sharp power chord. Down to the A. And then just go to the B power chord, you don't have to do the little blues. Just, just hit it a few times like that, kind of building into the solo there. Now, what does Jeff Labar do there? He has some um, little melodies that he's playing over it. So it has this.
So it's gonna start that same C sharp power chord. And then it sounds like he's doing octaves. You can just do the bottom of it if you want, but it uh, sounds better with the full octaves. Sixth fret there on the A, uh, and eighth fret there on the G. So you need that note in the, in the middle to be muted, accord, along with all the other strings. So just play that octave at the sixth fret and then move it up to the seventh. So this. So you just play the chord, start with the power chord, and then go up that octave at six, seven, and take it down to the eight power chord and let it ring. So this. And then when um, Tom Kiefer is doing the down to that E chord. Um, we have Jeff jumping up here. Just going up to those octaves again. This time, seven, six. So you have a low E string in there if you want. But, and then the same thing that Tom, Tom does. So we have this so far. And then uh, kind of starts the same way now, that C sharp power chord with a six, seven octave down to the A. And then just like Tom does, just kind of hold this kind of chord leading into the, uh, the solo there. So it's gonna be uh, Tom Kiefer playing the solo here, but underneath it, the chords are kind of a simplified version of the pre-chorus. So it's it's kind of like this. All right, so that's just going to be a set. So it's basically not doing the. You don't have to do that at all. It's just kind of just straight power chord here. D power chord with the fifth fret of the A string. And then off the uh, fifth fret of the low E. And then with that little then it releases the second fret of the low E. Down to the open E and then that E power chord. Just kind of strummed a little bit. So we have this. Then back to the D power chord and the A power chord. And take that down to the G, so this is the same ending as the regular pre-chorus here when you get to this G. Then you just go to the B power chord and just let it ring. This is kind of that enters the, the breakdown section out of the solo. All right, so let me play through Tom's solo for you real quick, and then I'll show you how to play it note for note. So here we go. All right, so we're gonna start here with this. So very, very blues bass player as Tom, as Tom is. So uh, we're gonna have this bending at the 12th fret there on the G string. And then we have the 10th fret on the uh, B and the high E together hit twice, so double stop. So you kind of do that lick twice, so like this. And then the third time I'm playing the lick, you're just gonna do the bend and hit the double stop once. So like this. All right, so it's kind of the first phrase. Into this. So that's gonna be a double stop here at the seventh fret of the, on the G. Uh, seventh fret across the G and the B. You can just kind of hold those two notes and bend them to the floor real quick. And kind of uh, release the bend. Do the double stop at the fifth fret on the G and the B. And do that again. Hammer on to the sixth fret there on the G. Over to the seventh 
seventh fret on the D string. A lot of times when I do double stops, I like to use two fingers for it. This gives me a little bit more control. So it is. From there we have this. So more double stops. We're here at the second fret of the um, B in the high E string. So he's kind of taking those two double stops, bending them up, and releasing. So kind of uh, doing that, and then going to the open B and the high E, and then back to the, the, the double stop there. So when he's playing that double stop, a lot of times he's just kind of slightly bending it up. And we're going to end that with a kind of a bend and release of the second fret on the G. Pull off to the opening G. Over to the second fret there on the D string. That's right. All right, next section. All right, so this is going to be a kind of a quick little lick. We're going to what he what he's doing. He's he's picking a cross E string, so he's going to do this bend at this twelfth fret there on the G to start it. And when he goes to these, um, it, it sounds like he's doing this. He's rolling across from the tenth fret on the B to the tenth fret on the high E string, and then pulling off um, 10, 13 to ten on the B. Uh, but it sounds kind of like when he's doing those, he's almost hitting like a double stop there. Like he doesn't do the roll too much. He kind of is picking both of those notes really. So you don't need to get them like completely separated like, like that. Just... And then we do the bend again at the 12th fret on the G. And then you're going to play the 10th on the high E and the 10th on the B. And then you're going to, he bends that up, up to a, a two whole steps and then kills it at the top of the bend. So we have this cool little lick. So a little bit slower. From there we have this. I'm sorry. So that's going to be hammering 5 to 6 on the G, over to 7 on the D, and then grab 8 on the B string. So after you grab that 8, go back to the 7 on the D, and then back to the 5 on the G and hammer on the 6 again. So we have this. So it's kind of like you go forward, five, six, and the seven, and then eight, and then back it up. Back to the seven, back to the five, six. So it's kind of. And then we're going to end the solo with this. So what he's doing here, he's holding, he's doing a little bit of oblique bend. We're going to be playing the. Um, Third fret there on the B string while you're gonna be you're gonna be bending up the second fret there on the G with it. So you're gonna be holding this one steady. And then you release that bend and then go and hit the open G while you're also hitting the B string. So you're always hitting those two strings together here at this part. So this. So then we go back down and do the bend again at the second fret. Then the open G. Resolve it now to the second fret there on the D. So it is. Then we have this. Which is 0, 2, 0 on the G string. Over to the fourth fret there on the D. And then we're going to end it with a unison bend. 
I like the hybrid pick this. So I'm picking the open B string. And I'm going to be playing the second fret there on the G string underneath it. And I'm going to bend that note on the G string up until it matches the pitch of that open B. And then you can kind of hear him just kind of start releasing the bend and stuff. All right, so it's a nice solo. Tom Kiefer's got a lot of great solos, so uh, they're always kind of blues-based, but melodic. You can kind of hum them. They're, they're really, really cool stuff. All right, so now we have the breakdown section, so we can kind of roll off the roll off the distortion a little bit. So we have this. So that's just kind of a little bit simplified, a little variation on the main riff. So we have this. So you're going to do that little bend and release at the fourth fret on the A. And play that second fret there on the A. And then you can go ahead and grab the whole B chord, right? So I just did that bend and release, then pick that second fret on the A, then just the fourth fret on the D string, and then pick the G, the fourth fret and back on the D in the fourth fret. Let's play this. Then we're gonna... That's that little bend and release now. Half step bend and release at the second fret on the low E string. To the open E. Then you're gonna play the octave of that E at the uh, second fret there on the D string. We're gonna go into the open B and open high E. So, so, so far we have this. Then into kind of a slow version of that little blues riff we were doing earlier. So on the A first, and then off the E, so it's the open E and second fret on the A string. That same note there, so we have this. So good, like four times. up the last time right so then we have just that little ending though is the a kind of a little blue thing and then the e and we just let that on that e just get into that big e power chord builds up into the outer course Uh, so it just kind of repeats the course out. There is a little outro solo real quick that, you know, fades out really quickly, so I'm not even really going to try to attempt to, to try to do it. He's just kind of up here in the pentatonic there. Uh, but anyway, uh, it fades out really, really quickly, at least on the version on YouTube. So anyway, so that's it. It's a fun song to play. Not The riffs aren't very hard. Um, this, the solo's got some challenging stuff in it, but um, it's a great blues-based solo. It can really uh, work on your blues, your double-stop chops with. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons 365com